Then check my phone. He's like, say, yo, bro, what's good? I'm like, oh, bro, no way. You ain't like, fall out. No, bro. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> he texts me. He's like, yo, bro, what's good? I'm like, I'm like, what's up? And he's like, uh, send me your number for like the music video or whatever. I just want to rock. I'm like, bro, yeah. Send you my number. Send him my number. My boy never responded after that, but I mean, oh, I still. Uzi. I am. Uzi, if you watch it, Uzi, <laughs> come on, man. We finally here. It's been long awaited. But welcome to the first episode of the Pop Up Podcast. Brought to you by Jado Films, your host. Today is a special one. Oh, man. We got the Hooper first. Entertainment second. Ball stepping. We'll give you 50 and dance at the end. We got my man, Jake West, in the building. What's up? Man, how's it going, Jake? Man, how's it going? How you feeling, man? Doing good, bro. Happy to be on here. Appreciate you, bro. So, um, just to, just to start, man, like for a lot of people, you know, some people know you TikTok first, but before we even get into that, like, how how did it all start? How did you start um uh, playing basketball? Um, yeah. So how I started playing basketball. I mean, my at first, I I mean, I loved sports when I was younger. So I like any sport. I just picked up like a baseball, soccer stuff like that but you know my dad just bought me like a mini hoop and like I just like fell in love with playing basketball downstairs you know like dunking on that little hoop and stuff like that so you know just at a young age like my dad just put a basketball in my hands and he just yeah he's the one he's the reason I play basketball and you said other sports like was basketball your first love or did you play other sports coming up yeah no so basketball wasn't like when I was younger I really liked baseball a lot so like I was like like, when the Phillies were starting to win, like, the World Series, I was, like, a big Phillies fan. So, uh, I just remember, like, playing wiffle ball outside, stuff like that. But as, like, once I got older, like, around to, like, 9, 10, I felt like basketball was, like, my favorite. Like, just because it's so fast-paced, like, baseball was starting to get slow. And I just, like, I just fell in love with basketball, so. And um, so you said your dad put the ball in your hand at a young, at a young age? Yes, sir. Like, did, was it, like, like, he put your ball in your hand? Like, he, did he start working you out or, like? Did it start off from, like, the driveway? Did he let you ease into it, or was it yeah. from, like, day one? He just like, come on, son, you into this? Let's go. Yeah, I mean, my dad, like, he was he would support me even if I, would, like, didn't play basketball. Like, he's not like, oh, you got to, like, play basketball. So, like, he's really supportive. But he, um, you know, just he saw, like, I really, like, I was talented at a young age. Like, I was better than, like, a lot of people. So he just told me to stick with it, you know, like, just keep moving. So, yeah. And what, and what, um great you would say that you end up falling in love with the game where you like i i want i want to do this full time like basketball is my life yeah. um i'd probably say around like third fourth probably like second third like around like that kind of age i was really big in baseball once i got to like probably like fourth or fifth i started to realize like i'm kind of different from everybody else like i really love this basketball stuff so i just decided to go with basketball and is it something that, like, changed or sparked in you? Is it a player that you started watching? Or were you introduced to, like, basketball and seeing something like, oh, yeah, like, this this my, this, this got to be my new lane? Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think Steph, like, really paved the way for me just because watching him, like, from 20, 2016 to, like, where, like, now it's just, like, he really – I think he really changed the game a lot. And, like, just watching him, like, he's so entertaining to watch. Like, sure. when I was younger, like, just watching him hoop, like, shooting from half court and stuff. Like, I just – I fell in love with his game. So, he was, like, a big inspiration to me when I was younger. What parts, like, did you try to model your game after him? Like, what parts of Steph's game – obviously, you know, everybody want to mimic the shooting, but he he's the greatest of all time. But realistically, what other pieces of his game did you try to take and add to your game? Yeah, so, I mean, when you're younger, like, you don't really, like, study the game as much as you do when you're older. But, like, now, like, I see, like, the way Steph plays, like, the way he plays off the ball is, like, what I'm trying to, like, put into my game right now because if you see him, he's never, like, lacks at these cool off the ball. Like, he's always moving. He's always, like, like looking at reads. So, like, if he comes off a double screen, they're up. He's going to back door. Like, he, he, he plays the right way off the ball. So, that's what I'm trying to import into my game. Mm. And did – um. What what teams what teams did you play for coming up, like, um in your younger days? Yeah. uh When I was younger, uh, I played for We Are One. 
Um, my coach was Chelsea Hall. Uh, I played with my friend Quan, Jadis. Uh, actually, I was a big fan of like your work when I was younger. Appreciate I got to see it. you at tournaments and stuff like that. For so sure. yeah, we are one. When I was about to like seventh grade, right. then eighth grade, I think started playing with Team Final Red. That's where I started to get noticed a lot. So yeah, it's, we are one in Team Final Red. I'm really appreciative of everyone there. And like when you when you're looking to play on these teams. What type of fit are you looking for? Are you looking like, I want to play with this team because I'm playing with all my boys? Mm -hmm. Or do you like, I want to play for the best program that's going to put me in position to achieve my main goal? Yeah, exactly. So when I was younger, I mean, I feel like I would want to play with my boys, you know. But I feel like once I got older, once I got to eighth grade, I had to, I left We Are One. I left all my friends, went to go play for Team Final Red just because it was a better situation. And it worked out for the best, you know. Now I'm here where I am right now, so. I had to make decisions whether like play with my boys or do what's best for me. So, and speaking of your boys, um, I heard in your uh, your recent uh overtime episode, um, one of your childhood friends passed. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Like, um, what was that like for you going through that? Um, yeah, it was definitely really sad. You know, uh, I grew up playing like township ball with him, Quentin. Uh, you know, he was always like funny. Like he always made me laugh and stuff. Like smile so just going through that was kind of sad because i would never think something like that would happen to him so yeah but you know i just try to like the motto is do it for q so mm -hmm. if i'm out there hooping like like i gotta dig deep like like what would he do right now like he, he can't even play basketball anymore so right. i gotta just always do it for q stuff like that and did he ch uh spark a change in your mentality like how old were he, was he when he passed i think 16 or how old were you uh 16 16, 16 yeah and did like did that like turn your motivation up or did that give you a spark of like I gotta I gotta do this for him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Q was like always supportive of me, so you know, seeing like something like that happen is really sad, you know. So I try to like you said, turn my mentality into like like do this for him. Like he wouldn't want you like so like being sad about it, like turn it into something like 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 go hard for him. So right. yeah. And what what age would you say um you start really getting into getting trainers, working really on your skill set, and, like, I'm about to put these hours in in the gym. When did you first start training, and who was it with, if yeah. you remember? Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually started, like, probably, like, fourth or fifth grade. My mm -hmm. mom, I mean, my, my mom and dad, like, they really, like, they they just threw me into Philly and was like, you got to go work out. Like, Tashi Carr, uh, Sean Colson, Chuck Moore, like, all them. So those three guys definitely developed my game really well. Like, my mom didn't go, like, throw me on like some playground near my house she threw me in the philly and said like work like find it out so that's definitely maybe the player i am today just growing up down there like playing against the best that's the best so, yeah. and coming up like and you say your mom just threw you into the fire yeah well coming up um where were you playing basketball at or like where where are you from where you really start say uh like the park and um neighborhood you uh, come from yeah so like plymouth uh Plymouth Park, I used to play there. Um, where my mom used to take me, like Discovery, you know, Discovery Charter. Yes, yeah. We used to play up there. So, uh, Tashikar, we used to train. I, I forget where it's at. It's, it's some pal, I don't know. But like, my mom would just drive me off there like weekends and just, just tell me like, or my mom and dad would just tell me like, just like find like work it out and stuff like that. Like they're not gonna help me. Like I just had to get through it. So it was definitely hard when I was younger because I wasn't the tallest or strongest. So. I had to find a way to like be quicker than everybody else. So, and what was that transition like? Cause I'm assuming like you were like the best player from your area, mm -hmm. and coming down in Philly, yeah. gritty, tough. Yeah, they th like you said, they throwing you on your fire, and it's yeah. like if you really think you can do this, come exactly. down here and do it with these kids. Yeah. So, what was that transition like for you? No, yeah, it it, it was way different. Um, like 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 you said, like going from like dropping thirty and like my Plymouth league, like with all my boys and coming down here. Going against guys like Ahmad, uh, mm -hmm. down in like West Catholic when I played pro youth, uh, we played against. I think it was was it Bearcats? Was that okay. the team? Yeah, 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 yeah. They was Bearcat. loaded back yeah, in the day. Like Leak, uh, Mod. Forget who else played on that team, but yeah, it was like it was always a battle down there. So I wouldn't always score the most, but I'm I felt like I'd start to turn like to like a dog, like not like take things for granted, like do the little things, dive on the floor, stuff like that. So I definitely developed like stuff like that from going up there. And um, did when you went back to the drawing board, like you would come down here, did you take like different mental notes back? Like this, is what I need to work on 
so when I do come down here and play with these guys, I can excel. Um, what were some of the things that you say you had to implement for you to have a great chance to really elevate versus the other competition? Yeah, so like like you said, like if I'm, if I'm down there like against like my boys and stuff like that, I go to the lane, maybe they let me go for the layup down down in Philly. I'm getting bumped. Like right, right. I have to learn how to take a bump. So like I wasn't scoring as much when I'm going down here. Like, I'm, I'm thinking to myself like, why am I not getting to my spots? Like, so like you said, like mental notes, like I got to get stronger. I got to take that bump. I got to find other ways to score. Like it's not going to be that easy. So like you said, just taking mental notes, like got to get stronger, got to be more physical, stuff like that. So in all of those things, did you carry all of that over to your freshman year at Carroll? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely did. Uh, Cause at Carroll, we had, we had a good fre- – when I was a freshman year, we had a good team. Uh, it's like Dean, mm-hmm. Sean, Moses, Blake, a bunch of guys. So we had a really good team, and I had to just find a way to not, like, be in, like – not, like, be in the corner, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. Like, find my way, not bring up the ball, like, find other ways to score, like, dive on the floor. Like, to get on the floor, like, it's not all about scoring. So right. I had to find something to do. do little like, things. Exactly, like, do little things, like, dive on the floor, take charge and stuff like that. So – when I, for my freshman year, I had to do a lot of stuff to get, to get on the floor. And what was your experience like at Carroll overall? Like, um, what did you like about the school, and what did you like about the um, the environment? You know, I like Carroll a lot. Um, uh, Carroll welcomed me like the first day I came in the door. Like, it was really cool. I built a lot of great relationships there. Um, it was sad to see the seniors go last year that I grew two years with. So, you know, playing in the Catholic League is the best league. I think like around so absolutely every night you can't take a night you can't take a night off every night you're playing against Newman Roman Wood Ryan so you can't take a day off so that that league definitely showed me like gave me grit like you said stuff right. like that and what would you say was your welcome to the PCL moment where you like this this it like this this is the ultimate prime time like we here now what was your moment where, where, where you was like yeah these boys can go mm-hmm um, I think, I think it was freshman year. I okay. think it was against Newman. Mm. Um, what team was that? Uh, or 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 what players? What guards was there? I'm trying to think who it was. I think Masood, was that like Masood. Oh, Masood. Ooh, Masood. Uh, Amir. Amir. Like, I, like that was like welcome because like right. we there on like a Friday night, eight o'clock, hack stands. <laughs> right. I'm bringing up the court. I'm getting guard nine and four feet. I'm like, wow, this is like, like I gotta, I gotta dig deep, like. Right. So like, that was definitely welcome to the PCL. Like everybody screaming, like. Right. I'm going against top players in the city, but like, I loved it. Like every night, like I'm competing, going against the best people, it made me better. So I liked it a lot. And um, in your tenth grade year, you took a huge stride. Like your whole game, I want to say your whole game changed, but the way how you approached the game, your impact was way different. Obviously, you was getting more time. You were on some more minutes. But talk about that summer. What did you do that summer to come back fully equipped for your uh, sophomore year? Yeah, so last summer, uh, like you, like I said to you before, it was, like, about taking hits. Like, freshman year, I'm, like, getting in the lane. I'm, like, I'm not getting to, like, I'm not being as strong. I'm not, like, taking the hits. So, like, that freshman summer, I uh, hit up my boy Kenny Reds, Kenny mm. Williams. I'm, like, I got to get stronger, like. I'm not not just like lifting weights, but like, like like agility stuff like that, like taking right. hits, like working on like ankle mobility stuff like that. So he just really took my game to the next level, just cause like I like I'm seeing the difference. Like even in the chosen league this year, I'm taking a bump. I'm not going back. I'm going into him. So right. like it's like I just took like the Kenny Red just took my game to the next level, and it showed my software. That's dope. I saw Kenny Red's um. On the episode, yeah. y'all grinding it out, man. Talk about the garage work. Y'all in the garage working. Like. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I mean, if there's weights, like, you don't need a big, like, crazy, like, that's why he calls it the dungeon because, like, it's all work. Like, we're not on our phone. We're not in, like, right. a big environment. we just working. So, it's, like, a great environment. We work hard. He's a he's a great trainer. Uh, and what, what would you say was one of your toughest moments in a dungeon where you, like, oh, my God, like, I can't wait to get out. Yeah, I definitely, I hate those, uh. <laughs> Those the ropes, ropes, bro. The ropes be killing me. Like, when we gotta, we be doing like three sets. So like the first one ain't that hard. Right. And you gotta like do like the switch, like the outside. Right. I'm like, bro, my arms are hooked. Like I'm like, but then I'm thinking like that fourth quarter, like I'm gonna be cooked in that fourth quarter. I gotta, I gotta keep going. Like my team's gonna rely on me. So 
I wish I think of stuff like that. I, I knew those ropes was tough when I saw my boy Luke. Y'all <laughs> said, come on, Luke. Come no, that on. That was Luke's first time. He was... <laughs> Luke he was, was like, man, I'm about, <laughs> he like, man, I'm about to give it up, yeah, man. Like, do did. I really want to do this, man? You uh, and the twins, y'all making it look easy, running through it. And then y'all head over to D-Coop. How did you and D-Coop uh, form a relationship and start getting in the gym? Yeah, so Coop, uh, when I was younger, I used to go to the PW games. So Coop, he went to PW. He played mm, at PW. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I used to go to all the games. Coop, he didn't really play much at PW, even though he was he was pretty good. He right. Was just, I'll, I'll try and like a lot of good guys like Ish, right. Na- Naheem's here, you know Naheem. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of good guys, but Coop, uh, he started training after uh, high school. And uh, since like I knew him from like PW camp stuff like that, I was like, yo, like in the gym, like and he was like, yeah, for sure. And he took his training to a next level. Like you see, like he was down there with you guys in Miami. Right. You see, he's picking up on things. He's not yes. like, he's going out with uh, Drew Hanlon, I think. Yes. He was, yes. Uh, so like he's not. He's not lazy. He like works hard. He like picks up on things, and now he's he's at the next level where he's a great trainer. He's working out pros like next level. Yeah, and he a great dude. Like he just want to see you guys get better, yeah. and he just he don't want nobody half assing. He's just like, listen, bro, we gonna lock in. We gonna lock in. Let's get this work and let's flourish. And that's what I that's what I like about Coop. And would you say that getting with Coop and getting with K Reds? Um, help you take that leap in the, uh, your 10th grade year in the PCO? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said, I already talked about Kenny like with the bumps and stuff, but Coop, like, he's really good at live situations. Like Most trainers think it's like, you like with trainers, you're like sitting there, you're doing all these dribbles and stuff like right. that. In the game, you're not going to be doing that. So you're doing Coop, real game. You're doing real game stuff, coming off pick and rolls, like making right. reads. So Coop definitely helped me a lot with that. Like I'm, into, uh, like I'm putting the workouts into the game. I'm thinking like in the game, making reads. So he's definitely a really good trainer. And what was you? What would you say was your, your you know your? I asked you what was your like welcome to the league moment where you like, dang, I'm here. Now what is your moment where you like, I can run with these dudes. Yeah. Like I I, I could do what they do. Mm-hmm. I feel confident in my skill set. I feel confident in my game. I'm working on my body yeah. to be able to go through and take those bumps. When was your? When did you have that moment where you like, I'm a killer. Like yeah. I could kill. I think. Um, the first couple of games for Carroll, we were playing against like I'm not gonna say like bad teams, but like like West Philly, they weren't like as good this year, so we were playing against them. And then we got cooked by Ryan by like 30 second mm-hmm. game, and we're like, yo, we gotta wake up. Come back a couple games later, we play against Newman, and uh, I don't think Rob played that game, but we we lost by like five, and I had like a lot like like 25 or something like that, and I'm Jeez. like, I'm like, bro, like I'm I'm going against Newman, the best team. In the league and I'm like showing people like what I'm doing next game the guy like 29 30 something like that against right. Devin I'm like I'm starting to, I'm starting to get used to it like I'm finding like ways to score I'm into like putting the stuff from the workouts into the game right so that was like a welcoming moment like, like I'm here now like let's do this and through the course of that year did you start getting different recognition from AAU teams um heading into that summer oh uh, yeah I mean most AAU teams thought I was gonna be a team final like like and then when team finally said they were shutting down, like scholars, Philly Pride, PSA, Rens, all that, they uh, they all texted me, um, just like, yo, like, you really like like your game and stuff like that. We've seen you, really think you can play. So yeah, a lot of IA teams hit me up. And what was your transition into making your decision to play for team final red? I think that was the EYCL, right? It, it was, it was EYBL. Newish. It was EYBL, but yeah. it was like it's like two different leagues, right? Yeah. So our team was still EYBL, but Team Final Red had two teams. Okay. So Team Final Red took the six teams Team Final, and just we were just a different name. We were still EYBL. So okay. Yeah. And what stood out for uh from uh for you during the circuit? Like, what was what was the competition level like, and how did you think you responded? Um. You know, the first session, I think the first session was tough. I think I averaged only like eight points. The first session, six points. So I was like, like, what am I not doing? Like, am I not? I think I wasn't like that confident with myself. I'm like, yo, like these kids are like too good. Second session, I'm coming back. I'm like, bro, you gotta switch your mindset. You like, you put right. too much work in to put yourself down before the game. Like, Absolutely. So the second session came back. I think I averaged like 20 second session, and I just started like. Like getting more confident. Third session, the competition. We played Cooper Flag, number one player in the country. So, just like seeing I can still like go with those type of guys, like really boosting my confidence going into the last session. 
showing people like like I should be I should be what I am. And um, I got to see like uh, through through over the summer. I think you playing with um, Milan Dean. Yeah, M- uh, Milan yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. He got super bounced. Yeah, and um, y'all had a nice little squad together. And then I go on my Instagram, and I see you about to play with the Monsters, <laughs> Rod Wave Elite. I'm like, whoa. I see the guy, it was like Cam Wilder. Cam Wilder, yeah, Cam Wilder. Cam Wilder. Yeah. He putting together these Space Jam Crazy. type joints. I'm like, hold up. Yeah. They talking about they going up spooky nook. Yeah. But <laughs> the whole lineup, crazy. Crazy. And yeah. then y'all was at uh, Sportica. We was at Sportica the first. The first one, the first, court yeah. was, bro, like the whole no. court, no. like standing room <laughs> only. No, it was you crazy. You come get it off the tip, yeah. off the board. Off the backboard first play. What's going through your mind, bro? Why? <laughs> bro. why well, take take me through that. Take me through that whole moment. Take me through you building a relationship with Cam Wilder, you agreeing to play with Rod Waverly, and what was that first tournament like at Sportica? Yeah, um, so I seen them on my For You page. Uh, they had a Dallas tournament the weekend before. Mm. I'm like, I seen the crowd. I'm like, wow, this team's crazy. Like, right. It's be crazy to play. And then I commented on Cam's thing. I was like, yo, I'm trying to play. He didn't answer, so I was like, ah, it's whatever. Then uh, my boy uh, Isaiah Fuller, I don't know if you've seen him before. He okay. goes to Keen. Mm. Uh, he's a big TikTok like guy, like basketball TikTok guy. So he hit me up and was like, "Yo, Cam, trying to, Cam, trying to get one more person." I'm like, he's like, "You want to play?" I'm like, "Bro, yeah, I really want to play." So uh, Isaiah really helped me with that. Added the group chat with Cam, we got all set up. Asked my dad, but I was like, "Nah, you're not playing. I'm not, you're not playing with that." I'm like, yeah. "No, Dad, you don't, you don't understand. Like, this is like, <laughs> this is like big. Like, you don't understand." Right. My dad's like, no, nah, that that looks like that looks like some excuse my language. It looks like some bullshit. Like, like, right, right. Like, and my brother's like, no, like this is like my like my brother really convinced my dad to, to get me to play with this. And he was Luke? like, yeah, Luke was like, yo, dad, no, 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 this stuff is like tough. Like, like he's gonna get so much stuff. My dad's like, all right, you can play. Like, whatever, just be careful. Like, don't get hurt. Right, right. So we go up to I go up to the tryouts, and there's like five hundred kids at the door for the tryouts. I'm like, bro, yeah. What? I'm like, so I go meet up with the kids at the tryouts. We're, we're trying to walk in the door. Kids just screaming, grabbing us. I'm like, bro, this is insane. This is tryouts. This isn't even like a game yet. Go to tryouts or whatever. It's crazy. Next day, we come. Security's like, you guys aren't playing. Like, it's too many people. Like, you guys aren't playing at all. We're like, all right, we'll keep it under control and stuff like that. We walk in. It was insane. Like, just kids like yelling and stuff like that. We get on the court. Couldn't even play for like, for like 30 minutes. Kids were just sitting on the court, stuff like that. So just like, and then I didn't think I was gonna start like just cause like right. I mean like there's a bunch of kids on the team, right. but Cam's like, "Yo, you started." Like, all right, I get out there. I'm like, just looking around. I'm like, this is crazy. There's so many kids. Like, kids hanging up off the top. Right, just right. Like, Yo, Jake, Jake, Jake. It's like it's right. crazy. And then I see that, like tip off gets to me. I catch it. I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to dunk this like a tip. Mm. And then I see my boy Rope. Like he's crazy bouncy. I was like, oh. This would be crazy. I'll do it off the backboard and start the game. Shoot off, dunked it. Crazy start to the game. It's crazy. And the crowd went the crowd, crowd went, went crazy. 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 Like the crowd went crazy. I'm looking like, yo, like, is this a like a yo? I've never seen nothing like that before. Yeah, it's crazy. I, me, me either. And um the way how the kids were like just really Showing like their interaction with you like it was like real all love. They no. was like hyped up and they yeah. was into it and stuff like that. How did that make you feel? No, it made me feel great. Like, like I said, like I mean, I didn't say this yet, but I was like a little bit down on myself for a little bit just because like the season, like Carol season, like we lost. Like I was like, like I really wanted to go to Cluster. Like mm. you know what I'm saying? So like I was like I kind of like felt like like down about myself. You know, like I was like this is like after the fir- I think this is after the first session. Okay, I'm like. I'm like, oh, it's going eight points. I'm like, what's going on? So then, like, I get with Rod Wave, and I'm like, like I see all these people, like, showing, like, all this love to me. I'm like, bro, like, this is, like, this is real love. Like, like it's not like people, like, like, they're being cool to me. So, like, that Rod Wave experience, like, really helped me, like, give me confidence and, like, show many people, like, really love me. So, like, shout out Cam for real for, like, giving me the opportunity. Uh, that's super dope. So would you say that your TikTok family boosted your motivation? Yeah, definitely. I mean... It, it's it comes with positive and negatives. Like sometimes, like you'll read a comment, someone will be like, "Yo, he's he's just a TikToker. Like he can't really play." Like, but like, at like maybe like a couple months ago, I would look at a comment. I'm like, 
people like don't really think I'm like that good. But now, right. like I see, I come, I'm like, whatever. I know how good I am. Stuff right. like that. Like I show people how good I am. So it definitely comes with negative, but positives is like so many people are supporting me and with my grind and stuff like that. And I'm always gonna know like people support me. So great. That's dope to hear, my guy. That's yep. dope. At this time, we want to take a moment to shout out our sponsor. This episode of Pop Up Podcast is brought to you by Pure Fuel. Pure Fuel is a no-added sugar, plant-based energy drink. You can follow them on Instagram at Pure Fuel Sport and to purchase any of their products. The link will be listed down below in the description. Now, you know everybody know, and for the ones that don't know, for that large crowd that was out there for y'all at the first ride wave of tournament, that came from, you already know, TikTok. Everybody in the building because they they saw you and your journey and want to see you up close in person. How did Jake West start on TikTok? Uh, how did I start on TikTok? Um, it was it all started as a joke, to be honest. Me and my boys was messing around at Carroll during uh after school, like before basketball. Uh, we seen these kids to start like doing this dance, like shake that. So he was like, <laughs> my boys like, yo, you trying to hop in this? I'm like. What is it? Like, I don't know what that is. And he was like, you just got to, he just showed me what it was. And I was like, all right, whatever, I'll, I'll hop in it. Right. So we just made the video, like, for, like, a week. It was at, like, 10 likes. Like, we we wasn't expecting none. Like, right. whatever, it was, like, 10 likes. Then, like, one night we look at it, it's at, like, 10,000. We, like, yo, 10,000 views, bro, no way. Right. And then ne- next morning it's at, like, 100,000. We're like, bro, what? Next thing you know, it's at like five hundred thousand. We're like, all right, bro, we gotta make another video. Like, and that was today. That was off your account. That was off my boys. I, off your I didn't boy start account. on mine. It was off my boys. Wow. So you didn't even start on no, your account. No, they found you got me it off rocking my on boys. your boy account. Yes. So, so was the comments spamming like, yo, who we is need that more vids. Yeah, who was the kid? kid? They was like, yo, we need more. So then, that wasn't even the most viral one. We come back the next day at school, like we both, we all had the same lunch period. So we like, yo, let's go outside and lunch period, make another one. Make another one after school. That thing's at like 200,000 in like an hour. We're like, bro, what the night? It's at like the night at the morning after that's at a million. We're like, bro, and y'all on your man account again, or you my, made your my own? man account? And we're like, bro, like a million views. That's insane. So, when was it at the point where you like, yo, I'm about to make my own account? So, that then that night after that video blew up, I went back on mine. I'm like, I'm like, this, yeah, I'm that dude from the video, and I started like. <laughs> Started doing it. Everybody's like, yo, Give me yo, my credit. Give yeah. me my credit. They're like, yeah. But, like, mine wasn't blowing up as much as his. Right, right. At first. So then, next day, come from school. We make another one. 500,000. We make another one. A million. What's your, what's your boy name? Uh, you Sal. Shout- Sal Monastero. He, he played Carol basketball, too. Shout, shout out, out Sal, to bro. Sal. Shout out Sal, bro. He- Got it wild. Got it wild. And up uh, there. He started it. Shout out to Sal. Shout out to Sal, man. bro. Listen, for all you people that don't know, no Jake West without the bull. Sal. Without Sal, bro. Shout out to Sal, He's man. More Sal, love. we appreciate you, man. I gotta look at the camera for this. Oh boy, over here. We appreciate you, Sal. Because Jake West, you 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 let him find out his second path and finding out that he an entertainer. He just he multi-talented, man. He the Swiss Army knife, man. Like who you know dropping 25, right? Go to the lunch period the next day at school, right? Do a video, 500K for the bell ring, <laughs> and he back in practice again. Yes, sir. <laughs> like, this is, this is movie type stuff. So, now you got your own TikTok, right? Yeah. And you started posting content immediately? Yeah, I started posting con- content immediately. And uh, so, when we started making those videos, it was around, like, around basketball season. It was around... Like November, December, mm. but that was my boy's senior year. So he started making videos from like till the end of the senior year. I think his account got to like forty thousand. But so after that, um, he was gone though. So like everybody like, which kind of sucks. Everybody unfollowed him. So like he got he he went down to like twenty thousand. He lost twenty thousand followers. My man Sal. Yeah, my man Sal lost twenty thousand followers. So you took all Sal followers. I mean, I get I gave him the followers and then I took him oh. back. Ooh. <laughs> But like Ooh. I felt, but like it was cool because like he still like he still has people following him. So. Right, right. But yeah. But when did you know like your account started blowing up? Like 
when when did it become crazy to you where you was like, bro, like I'm literally posting these couple second videos and like my phone is going nuts. Man, so um I started right after it blew up. I started doing mine. I think I I got to around like ten thousand in like a month. Um next month I'm at like fifty thousand. Next month Views or followers? Followers. <laughs> next month I'm at like a hundred thousand. I'm going into the summer, hundred like probably like hundred thousand. Get back to school without like three hundred thousand. Then I set a goal for myself, like during school, because we were setting goals. I remember in Spanish class, I'm like, "Yo, my goal is five hundred thousand by the end of the year, right?" Mm. So that winter, there was I think Philly like dancing or whatever during TikTok. That was like the most it, it just it's ever took it off. took off crazy. It was right. like, it was like a Coil Ray song. Um, it was like a the baby song. Uh, I know Dice Spence. They had a song. Brill had a song, so I honestly took took their songs and just ran with it and like just made content. And I think there was a week where it was like my account was like two million views, two million views, million views, two million views, three million views, like for like two weeks straight. It was just a million views, and I'm like, bro, like this is crazy. So like that week, I think I gained like a hundred thousand in a week from that, and then by the nice. end of the year, I was at like a, I was at a million by the end of the year. And that's why I was going to say, like, what was your mindset behind the videos? Were you, like, planning, like, well, I'm going to do this? Or is just, like, I'm going to turn this camera on. I'm a natural. Yeah. I'm just going to freestyle. Yeah, whatever so, comes to mind. Yeah. I mean, there's always, like, a, like people create, like, dances to it. So that's right. another one. Uh, my boy, Too Rare, he, he hit me up. He was like, yo, can you create a dance for my song? This is another way I blew up. He yeah, was like, shout out to Too Rare, Shout out man. to Rare, bro. He doing his thing, too, sure, man. Yeah. He um hit me up, like, yo, can you do a dance for me? I'm like, yeah, I got you, bro. Uh, so I made the dance. I think the dance is like the how many videos is this? I think it's like up to five hundred thousand videos. So five hundred thousand people have done the dance. So like that just should like I got like his song is it, And that's not crazy. the only artist you tapped in with. No, no, no. Then too too rare. Then talk about Uzi. No, yeah, how Uzi. You just, and uh, for the people who don't know, Uzi is Jake West's favorite artist. Favorite rapper. Take me through that, bro. When you see Uzi, he posts you on his account, right? Yeah. Bro. Where were you at? What were you doing? What was your feeling like when that happened, bro? I mean, anybody that really knows me knows, like, Uzi was, like, my favorite rapper growing up, bro. Like, right. all I did was listen to Uzi. Like, I was, like, a big fan of Uzi. So when I seen he made, like, a Jersey, like, Jersey Club song, like, that's what they call it, like, like just want to rock, I'm like, bro, I could I could maybe, like, do something to this because he's my favorite right. rapper. So uh, I get on, I make, I make the video. I'm, like, not thinking, like, I'm not thinking he's going to like or comment. Right, just, right, just right. Just showing my fans, like, I mess with Uzi. Next thing I know, I get a follow from Get Off My Blick to Live. I'm like, who is that? I'm like, oh, it's Uzi's account. I'm Ooh. like, yo, Uzi got a TikTok. My boy texts me. He's like, yo, bro, Uzi just posted you, bro. I'm like, bro, what? I look, and I'm like, bro, what? Uzi just posted me something like, let's go, Jake West. I'm like, bro, what? That's crazy. I'm like, I show my, you I show my mom. Yeah, I show my brother and my mom. I'm like, bro, Uzi just posted me. And they're like, no, you're lying. You're lying. Uzi didn't post you. I'm like, bro, yes, yes he did. Then, check my phone. He's like. Say, yo, bro, what's good? I'm like, oh, bro, no way. You ain't like, fall out. No, bro. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> he texts me. He's like, yo, bro, what's good? I'm like, like, what's up? And he's like, uh, send me your number for like the music video or whatever. I just want to rock. I'm like, bro, yeah. Send you my number. Send him my number. My boy never responded after that. But I mean, oh, I still. Oh, Uzi. I am. Uzi, if you watch your Uzi, <laughs> come on, man. man. It's whatever. I mean. I'll take no, I'll no. take the two sentences. No, right, right, I'll right. Take that, it. that was dope, bro. He, he showed dope. some love. He did, for sure. You could you could imagine how many people that he was casting for that video. Yeah, definitely. They ended up shooting in like New York, right? Yeah, I think Kaisenat was on it. My boy, Shoot. my boy Drew was on it. Drew Jeezy. That joint was cold. Yeah. My, my my youngin Moosey Vert was on it. Moosey Vert, yeah, that's my boy Moosey. Yeah. Listen, a lot of people don't know Moosey Vert was a hooper first. He was? He was yeah, a hooper? How do you TikTok? I know Bro was I know Bro was a hooper. Bro, Moosey was nice. Moosey was nice. Bro. What? Bro. If you ask anybody from around the way, all that, bro, you see how, like, quick he be doing the move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how quick he was. He had a nice handle on him, like a nice little what school, what school you went to? package. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he ended up going to uh, School of the Future. Uh-huh. But I ain't talking about Moosey high school career. Yeah. You know you know, you know, know when you got them kids that was super tough when they was in when middle was school? When they was in, yeah. Like, when you came up, you like, yo, he was better than me. Yeah. People be like, no way. Yeah. Like, you know, some yeah, know kids from around the way, they be yeah. cold. Yeah. But it's just like. Yeah, Moosey. Man, you know the stuff don't level out. You know yeah. the height. You know you no, said you yeah. was a little Moosey, dude. Yeah, yeah. Now you six two. Yeah, exactly. So you like films. I'm I'm moving a little different. Man, I'm a little now. different now. Yeah. 
And then you go from too rare, you go to Uzi. Yeah. You say you tell your mom and everybody in the crib. Uh huh. How did your mom start making videos with you, bro? Bro, I don't like me and my mom actually been doing that shit. Like, you know, Dub Smash? Yeah. Yes. Bro, me and my mom when we was younger, we used to be on Dub Smash, bro. We used to getting just, groovy. Getting groovy on Dub Smash, bro. Like, so like we just, you know, we like once I got that platform, my mom was just like, she don't really care about like the cloud or nothing like that. She right, right, care right, about right, that. Right. She's like, she wants to make the video. So we um we made the Uzi video again, and that thing was at like four four million or something like that. I'm like, bro, like TikTok really like like likes my mom. So I'm like, all right, let's keep let's keep doing this. Did it again, two million, like millions. So like, I was just like, it's crazy. And like my mom, like she like like I said, she doesn't care about that view. She just cares about us making right. the video. So right, told her how been it. Everybody loves us. And is it like? Is it like, yo, mom, you got to do this video with me? Or it's like, you at the crib, and she just so happened to be there. Yeah. Let's, let's just run. No, she out. be sending me to TikTok. She be like, yo, we got to do this. <laughs> <laughs> she be on TikTok. She's like, yo, we got we to gotta do this. I'm like, all right, mm, let's do it. Listen, I can bet my money. Any of you TikTokers that's out there, get your mom. We can set up a bad one. Bad. <laughs> Whoever you TikTok dudes out there, get your mom, right? We can set up a duo battle. Mom and son, Jake West. I yeah, bet my money on Jake West and mom. Do it. Because mom, bro, mom get you some time. <laughs> Nothing. She, she, she be on there. They be like, Go whoa, hard, Jake yeah. West, this where you get it? Do they do they say, do you, um, you get this where you mom? get your moves from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They be saying, That's yeah. That's where you get the rhythm from. Yeah. That's dope. Shout out shout out to mom, dude. Yes, sir. Man, shout out to mom, dude. That's dope. Who who would you say is your, um, um I know... Is it Jared McCain? Yeah, yeah, you know that Jared. go to Duke. Yeah, he real big on TikTok. Yeah, Jared. Yeah, I was he uh he followed me too, so I was like cool too. Cause I mean before I was famous, I was looking up to him too. So just That's seeing dope. him like he also give me confidence too, cause he gets negative comments and stuff like that. But he just keeps keeps doing his thing and keeps hooping. Listen, I don't want to get you in no trouble or none of that, bro. Yeah. But I I, I got to hear it, bro. I got to hear it. I'm not big on TikTok, uh -huh. but I know um you and other TikTokers and stuff. Like y'all cool, yeah. Y'all got like a little community that's super dope, yeah, yeah. Where you bonding and meeting different influencers, like y'all really doing something dope for y'all for the culture, yeah, for sure. Who is your top five TikTokers? It, Anyone? It I ain't met? no order like this. My number one, two. Just give me, give me five. I need five. Like people I met, or just people like just just yeah, just, that you just get inspiration from. Like if they like Jake, give me your top five TikTokers. It don't matter if you met them or not. Mm -hmm. That 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 you think is dope uh, that you follow. I probably say Jared. Okay. Um, Jared. Uh, probably my boy M. 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 Uh, Fuller, my boy Isaiah. Okay. Uh, Nelson, my boy Nelson from right away. Nelson. I think of one more. I think of someone more like bigger. Probably Drew. The kid, the guy Drew. He made the just want to rock dance by Uzi. Mm. So he was in the video doing the dance. So y'all cool? Yeah, like, me and Drew know? cool. Yeah, that's my boy. That's yeah. Tough, bro. So would you say like is you and Jared McCain as leading? Leading the uh, culture for best Hooper TikTokers. I think yeah. I mean yeah. Yeah, we definitely. Who, who else would you say? Do you think you can give me if it's you and Jared? Can you give me three other TikTokers uh, Hoopers who? that's that can make y'all starting five? Um, I feel like everybody kind of hopped on the wave now ever since like right, Jared right. started doing it. Like everybody started making TikTok. So right. Um, you know, I know there's just, like there's a bunch of people that do it. I mean, I haven't seen much that like. That aren't like not like trying to be like cocky on that aren't like the level like I mean Jared are right right right, like, right 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 I mean if I had to say I know I know Trey Parker be on there you know Trey, Trey Parker yeah su yeah super bound yeah for sure. so I feel like anybody on that overtime platform anytime on that okay okay they they get gotcha. the TikTok from because overtime is a big platform so right anybody from that overtime platform probably I would say and what would you say um was your wildest engagement I know I seen. Uh, you had your park run, mm -hmm. uh, takeover run. You had um, your um, appearance at Sportica. Yeah. Uh, I seen uh, you was downtown, I think, Lansdale. Yeah. Um, Before y'all played up uh, at Sportica or or either at Spooky Nook. It was like you was like downtown somewhere. So many people was like yeah. taking videos yeah, with yeah, you yeah. We, and things yeah. like that. They was adding and tagging you. Like, what would you what would you say was your craziest fan engagement? And you like, yo, this is nuts. Yeah. I think I would say the last tournament for Rod Wade, just because we went out there and like they had to have like gates, like there was like security, there's like gates in front of the court. Mm. There's kids like all over the court, like we couldn't even 
after the game, I had to leave early from the game, so I didn't get like, like, surrounded. Like get ambushed. Yes, we had to right. leave like thirty seconds before the game ended, just because kids would just run on the court before the game ended. So I would definitely see that. Like, we couldn't even when we was in the tournament. We we had to go to a room like where like no one was, and we had to like mm. be like locked in there. We couldn't even go like to Wawa or nothing like that. Like. We couldn't so, go down to get like a smoothie. So you was hooping on an empty stomach. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't eat nothing. Or no, actually, that tournament I didn't hoop because I, I was hurt. Oh, yeah, but I just, hurt. I just pulled up. Yeah, Sheesh, it was crazy. Like that, yo, bro. It get wild, wild, bro. Like I'm looking on there and I'm seeing like kids chasing y'all. Yeah, bro. They like crazy. Jake, we love you. The girl said, "This is my proposal to Jake." <laughs> like, yeah, bro. It's wild. Like, bro, they out there like they letting you know, man. Yeah. Like. Bro, that has to be a good feeling, No, bro. it is, for sure, yeah. has to be a good it feeling. Is. Where were you at when you hit a million? Um, Where was I? I had a million. I think I had a, I had a game. I had a basketball game, and I came home. I know I was at, like, 99.9. Nine. Mm. I was at, like, 99.8. Nine was you waiting on that? Yeah. You I was, was waiting on it? I, I was hooping, and then after the game, I think I was at, like, 99.9. Nine. We went home. I just kept, like, refreshing it, seeing if I was going to get it, and then I think when I got home, I was at a million. So that was, like, crazy just because, like, Bro, if you told me like I I was at a million like two years right. ago, I'd be like, right. be like, what are you talking about? Like, even to have like ten thousand two right. years ago was like crazy. So, did TikTok the platform ever reach out to you? Um, I've had like managers from TikTok like right, hit me right, up right. like, yo, like I want to work with you, like be your right. manager. But right, I, I can't. Don't they myself. have like a headquarters or like a studio? I think they do. I think they do. I'm not sure. I just know that some some TikTok like people that like manage other big influencers have, like hit right. me up like yo like I want to manage right. you stuff like that and who would you say if you had to make a, a dream video right yeah. TikTok dancing joint yeah so they just want to rock and you can choose two other TikTokers yeah. to get busy with you or like, whoever the people who would be those other people on that video with you like I like I like watching streams a lot like on Twitch and, right, and right, stuff right. like that so definitely Aiden Ross you know who that is okay. bro, that's no, my I boy don't. bro yeah, <laughs> Aiden Ross too funny, bro. Aiden Ross and probably like Kai Sinet. Mm. I like like them too. They're, bro, they're too need funny, to do a bro. Twitch, bro. Bro, I was and Rod. You know who Rod is around here? He's a rapper, really. Uh, nah, probably, yeah, probably, so wait, he do no? Is he with like the Philly Goats? Yeah, 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 he's kind of yeah. with them. So right. he uh he was he went down with Kai Sinet like during the summer, and I was like, yo, like like can I come? And my he was like, yeah, but my mom like didn't want me to go down there just because. She want me by myself, but right. hopefully I can try to get down there and right. just meet like Casa Night Aiden, and that would be like super tough. That'd be on your bucket. Yeah, Checked definitely. Off your bucket list. Checked off my bucket list. What is school like for you these days? Like, yeah. is it hard for you to be in school given the popularity you have, or um, you found out a way to deal with it? Yeah, I mean at Carroll, like everybody knew me before that, so like it wasn't really like nothing at Carroll. It was just like, like I was like the same person. Yeah. But when I made that switch to Penn Charter, it was definitely, like, really different just because kids are like, yo, like, that's him. Like, like, he goes here and stuff like that. But I'm already, like, like a shy kid. Like, I don't really talk to, like, a lot of people. Like, I'm right. not just going to go up and be like, what's up? What's up, bro? Right. Like, I kind of stay to myself. So right. I just, like, I mean, I'm not really going to go up to people and be like, like, talk to people first. So it's, like, kind of different at Penn Charter. Like, I got to, like, say what's up to people first because they don't yeah. know who I am and stuff like that. Yeah, you let your real personality off on them videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why people they be expecting something. Yeah. You ever get the kids, they asking you to I seen the kid at the mall. Oh yeah, yeah. On the, in the overtime <laughs> video, right? Yeah. yeah, he's at the mall. Yeah, yeah. He trying to bend. He's he like, Jake, give me motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cold, bro. No, yeah. That's cold for that to happen. Yeah, for sure. And, and speaking of Penn Charter, um, why did you transfer? What, what was the reason for you coming over? I seen that you was at the George School first, yeah. if I ain't mistaken. Yeah, no, you're right. You're was right. that a real thing? Um, Just take me through that, yeah, yeah, that process sure. of you end up finally landing at Penn Charter and leaving Carroll. Yeah. What was the process like? Yeah, so Carroll, like, I love Carroll. It was really good. It was a good situation right. for those two years. I appreciate Coach Bell, Coach Richards, Coach Jesse, all them, Coach Leon. Um, but, you know, I was just trying to take, a, like, a step, like, just to prepare me better for college, better, like, facilities-wise, like, Penn Charter. You see, I don't know if you've seen the gym. Gym is crazy. No weight room, two floors. School. I gotta you see have, that. You have like a writing center there where like teachers help you write. Like I don't have that stuff at Carroll. Like right. it just prepares me better for college. You know, uh, with George. And you saying just not not to cut you off, just not uh, um, on the sports side. Nah, you're yeah. just saying yeah, academically, saying academically like, like, overall, yeah, overall, it's just a better transition yeah, for you. It's gonna prepare okay. me better for college. And then uh, George School, you know, it was 45 to an hour away from my crib, and my right. mom wasn't trying to let me board so 
uh i knew that before going in obviously right. but you know there were certain like i just wasn't like as comfortable there as i think like i would have flourished at like and chart or something like that like you know like i'm big on like reading like situation so like if i know i'm in a situation where i'm not gonna be good like i don't want to spend my two years there mm. of my last high school years like right. bro like i'm not comfortable here like right i want to go somewhere where i'm comfortable right you know for those and last that, two that years next level of elevation exactly you just want to keep you get what i'm saying like yeah. you you saw what it could get like in the pco you had a great run and you was actually in the mix yeah you get what exactly. i'm saying yeah. and i was just like what's the next thing to elevate my career yeah. no i i get that bro that's yeah. that's super dope and then i see that um you spent a lot of time uh with the twins yeah shout out to the twins uh, my guy reem scene yes sir they all read uh what kyle state bakersfield, bakersfield yeah that's dope man shout out to them um yeah. how did that relationship stem um yeah so they always joke around but uh we was at runs at germantown academy during covid that was like one of the only only gyms like open around me Right. So uh, we was there, and they always try to like switch the story, but they always they said that I said like, "Yo, y'all tall." Like that was like the first thing I said, but I don't remember saying that, bro. <laughs> right. Like they trying to say I said like they was tall, but um, yeah. Like after that, like I just felt like a bond with them, like I never like really had with nobody else. Like they, right. like they just like they just cool people. Like they support me. Like it's not a lot of people that support me and like want me to like be good. Like a lot of people like hate on me. So like. They just always showing support, like, and love. And I know, like, they always going to have my back through everything. That's dope to see, man. I see y'all feel friendship build. Sure. And I see, like, y'all got a close bind. Now, with them being twins, bro, I know me. Bro, my eyesight a little bad. It hits. I can could, I could make sure I see that ball go through the hoop. <laughs> but, bro, sometimes I don't even know who is who's who. <laughs> can you tell, like, just off a, off a naked eye, like, if you looked at, um, like, if they had, because you know sometimes they – have the same hairstyle, yeah, yeah, same clothes. They kind of like branched out now yeah, yeah, yeah. where they kind of like doing yeah, their yeah, own yeah, thing. Yeah. But you know, that's kind of like common for twins. Mm -hmm. yeah. But do you know who is who? Yeah, I mean, when I, like when I first met them, no. But like, like they, like when there was at West Catholic, they was at my house like every summer, like right, every day right, during the summer. Right. So like, like no weird stuff. But like you can pick up on like facial expressions. Like, yeah, you no, know, like sure. eyes, like Reem's eyes is like lower. Seems mm -hmm. eyes is like, Someone's somebody was telling me they could tell by the hair. The hair too, yeah. They were saying something but like sometimes about the you can't hair. tell because they get the same hair. So <laughs> that's like, what I'm like, saying, bro. Yeah. Like that's crazy, bro. Yeah. So outside of um, Reem, um, you know, that's people. That's those guys are your boys. Yeah, you hang sure. with them full time, and there's somebody, there's some uh, your friends that see you on the daily, and then besides them, the only person I can think of is baby bro. Yeah, Luke. Yeah. What is it like, man, for him being your baby brother and him? It's just, bro, he just look like, he just remind me of a mini you. Yeah, that's how and he, does. And it's, he gets so much enjoyment just seeing you do what you do. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's 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 so dope to see, like, that sibling love. Like, he, he got so much love for you. He talk about you. And, and the way he can, like, put things together at that such of a young age. And yeah. then, like you see. He persuades your dad. Yeah. That's, that was like what? Yeah. So bro. talk about that, man. Yeah, no, Luke, he's he's really supportive, bro. Like, like my mom always says, like, uh, there's like this big story. Like when I when I got my license, he uh he's in school, he's not allowed to have his phone. But like he goes to the bathroom, he's like, Yo, mom, did Jake pass his license test? Like, he's always like worried about like he's always like supportive and worried about like what I'm doing and making sure I'm good. So like just to have like a little brother that supports me like that, you know, like and it's cool to see like him go like through his journey because I know when I was his age, I was like the same height as him. He's like five, four, like he's small. He's getting like pushed around a little bit. So like I seen like it's also good for him to see because he saw me grow up that way. Right, Like right, he was right. like, I was small, but now look at me. Like I'm, right, right. I'm up with them now. So it kind of gives him like more confidence. Like, like it's going to happen. I'm going to grow. I'm going right. to be stronger. I just got to get through this like hard time right now. Absolutely. And just keep working. And, um, what would you say, I mean, you have a, a huge following, you're doing great on the court, um, and, and your biggest um, your biggest thing was you saying, like, I want y'all to know I'm a hooper first. Yes, like, if TikTok didn't even exist, I would be doing this. Right this is my love. So what, what would you have to say to the younger generation of kids that look up to you and say, because it's, it's kids out here, bro, that say, like, I want to be like Jake was. Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. Whether you want to believe it or not, and whether you know how to embrace it or whatever, because yeah. I know it's some people they be like, 
yo, I want to be like Jada one day. Or I had some wild stories about like stuff that go on with me, and I'm just like, it's no way. Yeah. Like I'm just a regular yeah, person exactly. to myself. Like yeah. I'm not doing anything like extra. I'm just doing what I love to do. So what what would be your your message to yeah. kids who want to be like you? I mean, yeah, like it's just like I didn't I didn't get to this point by like just being like lazy and stuff like that. Like I worked hard to get where I am right now. Like all those like like on the basketball side, like I didn't just get good like overnight. Like I put right. like a lot of work in and stuff like that. And like on the TikTok side, like I know it's weird, but like you gotta like post consistently. You can't just right. be like right. You can't just think you're gonna be famous like that. Right. Like right. my growth didn't happen. Like I mean, it did happen like a little bit quick, but it didn't happen just overnight. Like posting one video. Right. Like you have to be consistent. Like if I right. only posted one video. If I only had that one blow up, I maybe only have like twenty thousand. Right. But I was consistent with it and I knew like when to when to post, when to like run with it. So just like tell them like just tell the people like just like be yourself, bro. Like that's like what my brand is too. Like just right. be yourself, bro. Like don't don't be other people. Don't try to like fit in with other people. Just right. just do you, bro. Cause just do you. I wouldn't be where I am right now if I try to be someone else. Absolutely. Listen, y'all, it ain't no other way to do it, man. This was a great one. Jake, thank you for coming, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Um I wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Everything coming up. And that's a wrap, y'all. We out of here. Sir, we out. Peace.